Today we're going to talk about vertical farming and it's not the first time we do this in the interviews uh, I've done before with Yokohima TV but this is on particularly on nutrition and uh, the periodical table so to speak and we do this with Christian holt Carlson. he's from the University of Copenhagen so welcome uh, Christian at uh, Yokohima TV. Thank um, you. Let's start uh, sharing your, your research or activities uh, uh, in the Nordics. Thank you for the invitation. So uh, I'm uh, Christian Holtz-Lausen, as you said, a plant scientist from the University of Copenhagen. I'm employed at the uh, Department of Plant and Environmental Sciences, where we are around 500 people. And um, I have a particular interest in vertical farming in a Nordic context. Talk context, I'm running a, a research group, uh, plant nutrients and food quality, at, uh, at the University of Copenhagen, where we try to bridge plant science and food science. Uh, and we do this by, by analytical chemistry. We develop analytical methods that enables us to understand, for example, the biochemical functions of nutrients in plants, nutrient interactions. We investigate how different uh, fertilization strategies or production systems such as vertical farming affect the nutrient content of uh, of plants, and then we bridge to uh, to food quality, and that's a complex trait, of course, but it could include nutrient content, nutrient bioavailability, nutritional value of crops, protein content, etc. But also on the side, compounds such as heavy metals. So we're also interested in how food production systems actually affect the safety of, uh, of, uh, of plant-based foods, for example, foods coming from vertical farming systems. So that's, that's more or less what we do in, in, uh, in my uh, research group. Okay. And uh, when it comes to vertical farming, we address various research questions. We do, for example, look at the impact of fertilization strategies and how different growth conditions, they affect harvest yield and the quality of, of, of the food. We uh, look at how soilless, because it's normally production without soil in hydroponics, how this affects uh, the safety of, uh, of our plant-based foods. So we don't want any undesired compounds to, to, uh, to enter our food. You can either fertilize too little or fertilize too much, and that's going to affect the food quality, but you can also have contaminants from from the hardware you use in vertical farming systems. So this is something we look into. And then we try to, um, as I said, develop analytical methods to analyze this, but we also use various sensors. We use spectroscopy to, uh, to uh, predict nutrient status without actually harvesting the plants. So we try to measure how plants are doing, if they are suffering from deficiencies uh, during uh, the plant production. So while the plants are are actually growing and then we are trying to use this for data-driven uh, plant production to automatize what I call soilless plant production. Which, which, which means that your focus is not so much as, as in many vertical farm research areas on the, the lighting but you focus on other areas. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not an expert on, on uh, light optimization. We uh, supply what we think is, is best regarding light intensity and, and, uh, and uh, spectral composition, but mm. we actually focus more on, on uh, nutrients. So which nutrients are added? Are all the essential plant nutrients available in sufficient amount? What happens in the nutrient solution? Is it depleted from some nutrients or all nutrients during a plant growth? When do we have to replenish it and supply nutrients again? And how does this actually reflect the nutrient content of, uh, of the plants being produced? So it, we have a strong focus on, on plant nutrients and how this affects uh, food quality. Okay. And uh, here is just an example of, of uh, systems we're working on. So to the left, you have the periodic table of all essential plant nutrients. Those are the, those are the ones colored here. And uh, what we have is, is uh, a highly controlled environment in, 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 in our hydroponic systems where we can actually remove one of the nutrients at a time and then investigate what happens with plant growth, food quality, 
when plants are suffering from, for example, nitrogen deficiency, potassium deficiency, or magnesium deficiency. So what you see to the right here is what you want to avoid uh, during your plant growth. So we're trying to investigate this. Uh, we're trying to link functional roles of nutrients in plants to, to food quality, and we investigate sensors and their ability to avoid what you're seeing here to ensure that plants stay healthy during the whole uh, growth season. Okay, so that means that you are your, let's say, your vertical farm laboratory, so to speak, is you can adapt all sorts of hardware, uh, uh, the, all the nutrition you can add or delete or adding, those sort of things, those sort of flexibility you have. Yeah, we have, and we we uh, we do that in collaboration with uh, with uh, vertical farming companies. For example, the company called Next Food, who are experts on uh, aeroponics, and they have a highly controlled system, uh, but what you see here on the slide is actually a pretty simple system. If you want to induce a nutrient deficiency, you basically need a, a bucket filled with water, a bit of oxygen, and then the nutrient composition that you are interested in. So you can you can do a very simple system. And if, if I then put this put this in layers, uh, then uh, then you have your vertical farm. So we have very simple vertical farms, and then we collaborate with companies that have very uh, technology driven, uh, hardcore uh, and hard hardware heavy uh, vertical farms so uh, yeah so that means that you will uh, uh, that you will share your the, 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 I, I suppose you have many results and very many many details if you share these at our conference the vertical farm conference as well probably yeah we have several projects ongoing and have also completed several uh, projects for example in collaboration with uh, students uh, but also various uh, various companies where we have tried to investigate different nutrient compositions, different fertilizer sources. Uh, many companies are interested in using organic fertilizers instead of inorganic in vertical farming systems. And this mm -hmm. is something we are also looking into. So uh, I would like to share my, my view on this and, and highlight some of the uh, uh, knowledge gaps we have within uh, fertilization strategies in vertical farming. Okay, okay. So thank you very much for sharing uh, your research and giving an insight a preview of what you're doing. So you're um, as always, I end with the question, uh, the personal question. So the person behind the presenter, and uh, I do this with whatever your favorite music or, or art or ha uh, city or food or uh, or animal. So let me know what, what is your favorite thing. <laughs> Oh yeah, there are what to choose from. But but I'm uh, I used to to work as a musician before uh, going into academia. So I'm actually a, I'm actually a drummer. So I used oh. to work as a drummer, and I have a passion for uh, for music. And uh, yeah, not a specific uh, genre, but I, I like most of it. But but I suggest that you check out the Danish band called Dizzy Miss Lizzy if you're into. Uh, some some good uh, Danish uh, drums. Uh, the album called uh, Forward in Reverse from 2016. That's one I'm listening a lot to right now. So uh, okay, uh, that's that interesting. So you are a a drummer. Are you still drum? Play drum? Yeah, yeah. But just for a hobby in a band or just for fun? Yeah, in my spare time. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing your 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 project, your work, and also some give a glimpse on your personal uh, uh, hobby. Uh, and look forward to seeing and meeting you at our conference in November. So thank you very much, Christian. Thank you. Thank you.